All right, guys, today we are going to be taking a look at or doing kind of an update to my entire knife collection. Now, it's changed quite a bit and maybe not as much as you might think since the last time you saw it. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it because this one will probably be a little bit of a longer video. So we're going to start top to bottom, right to left, because that is the way things are intended to be. Maybe not, but let's jump right into it. So first off, the first knife of the collection. <clears throat> so first off, the first knife of the collection is the Kershaw Emerson CQC6 in D2. And this one is a pretty cool knife. I really don't have any complaints on it. It is just a decent budget knife. It is made in the great country of China, or maybe not so great country, but it is a decent knife and is a really, I would say, good way to kind of get your fix for an Emerson because of the way that this knife is done, especially with that V grind as opposed to the chisel grind, definitely makes it a little bit more user friendly. All right, next one up is the Emerson Mini Com or Mini Commander. This one is actually one of the older knives, if not the oldest knife in the collection, though it is reasonably new to me. But this is just a good old fashioned Emerson Mini Commander. And this one was made in 2009. It's just a really cool, really great um, Emerson. In my opinion, I have a soft spot for the Commanders as we will see as time goes on. So the next one up is the Emerson Ensar. This is one of the cooler and I would say more wacky designs by Emerson. I feel like a lot of the Emerson collectors out there, you know, they have things, um, you know, some of the more rare kind of self-defense or Karambit styled Emersons, but few people have the Ensar and even fewer people, I would say, know what the Ensar actually is. <clears throat> All right, next one up is the Emerson Horseman or Mini CQC8. And once again, this one is one of the older ones. This is a 2013 vintage, so it's a little bit on the older side of the Emersons, but still a really incredible knife. Now, we don't just have Emersons in this collection, so the next one up is going to be the Spyderco Paramilitary 2 or PM2. Of course, this is a Cutlery Shop exclusive, so it has the Blaze Orange and OD Green G10 scales and is rocking CPM Rex 45 for the blade steel is going to be the Spyderco Para 3. And of course, this one's basically the smaller brother to the PM2 or Paramilitary 2. This one is a plain Jane S30V with black G10 handles, but still gets the job done and is perfectly fine, in my opinion. All right, moving on from there, we have the Tour Chasm, and this is the Black Widow or Widow. A chasm and it's just a special edition of the tour chasm but this guy is nice and small one of the smallest knives in my collection has a nice deeply tontoed tip to it it is quite a slick little blade next up to that one we have the much larger going from a very small to pretty big we have the heretic knives bounty hunter edition of the manticore x like i said this is the manticore x so this is the big boy version and as you can probably tell it is it's a pretty pretty decent sized knife even in kind of just laying it across the other knives here it spans quite a few this one also is in magna cut so that is pretty cool and for those who don't know the bounty hunter theme is just kind of a nod to the Star Wars um, Boba Fett kind of um, themed knife, or that's kind of what this knife is themed after with the Mandalorian and the color scheme as a whole. Moving on from there, we have the Microtech Ultratech because what knife collection isn't complete without at least one Microtech Ultratech. Even if you don't necessarily love the Ultratechs, they still are pretty cool and uh, definitely worth having. This one's an old school, I want to say um, like 2015, okay, 2015 version um, with the really prominent tri-grip pattern. All right, moving into a few Benchmades here. We have the Benchmade 273 Mini Adamus for this guy. And of course, this one's in the avocado typed colorway with that FDE blade and OD Green G10 handles. 
Then stepping it up, we have the Bayer Brother and the automatic version, the 2750 Auto Adamus. This thing is still an absolutely a rocket ship. Kind of hard to put away with one hand, but manageable. But yeah, this is basically the full-sized Adamus automatic version, and it is a freaking rocket ship. And while it's not necessarily my favorite EDC knife, it is still pretty cool. Then of course we have the old school Blade HQ edition um, Benchmade bug out, and this one is in CPM 20 CV and is just a legitimate Benchmade bug out. Hard to go wrong with, but not my favorite per se um, EDC knife out there, but still in the collection. <laughs> Next to that, we have the Mini Grip. This is probably one of my favorite Benchmades out there. This is the 556. Of course, this one has the cyan blue handles, so it's a little bit different, but still a 154 CM blade steel and just a really classic version of a classic knife, the Benchmade 556 Mini Grip. <coughs> then next to that, we have the Benchmade full-sized 550 Griptilian. Of course, this is my first knife in the collection and is a user abuser. And yeah, just an overall well-rounded well blade. Of course, this one once again is in 154 CM. So really cool blade, has a lot of history for me. And I once again am a very big fan of Benchmade Griptilians. As those are not the last two Griptilians you'll see in this collection. All right, moving into one of the last Benchmades is going to be the 630 Skirmish. And this is one of the old school Benchmades. I keep saying old school Benchmades probably, but um, this truthfully is one of their older designs. It came around in the mid 20, or not mid, but early 2010s. I want to say like 2011, maybe even 2009. Uh, but this is the Benchmade 630 Skirmish, and it is one of their best knives in my opinion. It is a really cool titanium frame lock, kind of meant to compare or compete with the Chris Reeve knives um, Sabenza, but in its own unique way. All right, speaking of Chris Reeve knives, not quite the Sabenza, but this is the CRK Omnimzon. This one is in CPM S45VN, and uh, it's just a very well-rounded blade. Mine in particular is the Tonto version. You can also get the Harpoon version, but I actually like the Tonto version of this blade the most. So yeah, this is the Omnimzon, and this one isn't anything too fancy. Of course, it is a newer version because it is an S45, VN. Then speaking of the Sabenza, we have the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza. This one is an S35 VN because this is a Sabenza 21. And of course it is also a Tonto similar to the Omnimzon. And this one has the micarta inlays. So very cool. This one is very well broken in with me and I absolutely love the Sabenza 21. It is in my mind one of the just quintessential staples of what a knife should be. Then next to that, we have the Chris Reeve Knives Large and Cozy. And this one is kind of the spiritual successor to the um, Sabenza line or lineage. It's kind of just an updated version, still very timeless. This one, of course, is in S45 VN as well. And of course, it features micarta inlays. Really nice knife. It took me a long time to track one down and get one but I really do love my Chris Reeve knives and the Nkosi has to be one of my favorites for sure. Next up, we have the Strider SNG and this one is one of their newer versions. It was from a drop last year and it features G10 gunner grip on here. So super grippy. It is in CPM S30V. So one of their older school steels, but is just really cool. And I love the SNG aesthetic, especially with that tiger striped blade and the flamed titanium on the lock side. Overall, really cool blade. It is a Strider SNG, so if you like them, you like them. If you don't, you don't. Next to that has to be one of my favorite, all time favorite knives in this collection. And this is the Hinder XM18, three and a half inch with the recurve blade CPM 20 CV and has been customized with black and purple G10 with a black or sorry, purple um, inner or liner, if I can not trip over my words today, and is running on skiff ball bearings. 
absolute rocket ship and love it. This thing is buttery smooth, really fun. And uh, yeah, it's just a pleasure to carry. Then next to that one, we have the smaller brother and actually my first Hinderer XM18. This is the three inch version of the XM18 with the Spanto version of the blade. This one is an S35VN. It's a little bit older school. I tuned this one up recently, so it is a little bit better deploying. The previous owner just absolutely let this thing get so either pocket linty or just so gummed up that it didn't really close very smooth, but it does now run and isn't necessarily drop shut, but it's still incredibly smooth. So love those guys, they make a good pairing. Next up is the ZT0562 in carbon fiber. This is a Hinderer collaboration and kind of features Hinderer's slicer grind. And yeah, this one is a you know carbon fiber show side on there um, and super well deploying, super fast, pretty overall, pretty clean. The only thing I dislike about the 0562 is that sometimes it can be a bear to get past the D10 ball, but outside of that, it's a pretty nice knife. And yeah, this one does have a um, aftermarket kind of starburst pattern to the titanium lock bar side that I think kind of just spices it up. It's definitely a user for me. I've put a new edge on it with my Wicked Edge, but still a great knife. Then next to that, we have the other ZT in the collection and probably my favorite ZT of all time, or at least a favorite ZT collaboration. And that is the 0450 and the 0452, but this one in particular is the 0450 CF or carbon fiber, of course, it has a full carbon fiber show side on it and it has a blacked out blade. I think the blacked out blade just kind of goes with that black aesthetic of the carbon fiber. This one, once again, is in CPM S35VN, but still really awesome. And once again, pretty darn smooth, maybe not quite drop shut, but pretty darn close. So really great blade. And uh, yeah, it'll definitely try to bite you if you're not careful, as you can see. <laughs> All right, jumping into the last of the Spydercos, we have the Spyderco Smock, and this one's been lightly modified by me. I changed up the clips, I changed up the uh, um, little lock bar here, and then I also changed up the clip as well, and I shouldn't say lock bar, but the lock bar button. To, to be specific, but yeah. So I changed it up, gave it a nice splash of kind of blue. So it has that black and blue kind of aesthetic to it that I think just really makes it very well rounded. Overall, the smock is a really, really sweet blade to EDC. And I do love EDCing really all of my spider coats, but the smock is probably the most pocket friendly of them all. Last, next one up, not last, but next one up is the Spyderco uh, Manix 2. This is what I call my sleeper Manix 2 because it has that CPM S110V blade on it. And outside of that, it looks like a stock standard base S30V, you know, Manix. So for, to the unsuspecting eye, they would think this is just a very basic, you know, run of the mill Spyderco, but it does have some actual serious performance packed in it. It. Then we have the um, Spyderco Delica, and this one is in K390 that I force patinaed, so you guys can see there. And yeah, it's just a straight up K390 Delica, just a really good, well performing workhorse of a knife. Next to that, we have the Spyderco Senta Fonte. And this is kind of like an oddball or maybe redheaded stepchild of the collection. I don't really EDC it that much, but it's a cool kind of old school um, Spyderco. And I don't really think that these are that popular, but it's a neat one to have in the collection nonetheless. VG10, Saki City, Japan made. So pretty cool overall. Then next to that, Final, final Spider Co of the collection, at least of the folding knives and EDC knives, um, is the Spider Co Spidey Chef in LC 200N. This is just a run of the mill Spidey Chef, but still a great knife. I absolutely love to carry it when I'm around water, or where I like to carry it a lot too is doing snow sports like um, snowboarding, where you know you're going to get a lot of water on you or water in the form of snow. All right, next one up we're going to go with is the Paragon Knives Phoenix. Now, 
feel like a lot of people are familiar with the Paragon Warlock. This is basically the same thing as the Warlock. This is just the Phoenix. So it's a little bit of a different blade shape. And of course, this one has the sharpened upper edge with serrations on it and is in CPM S30V. Old school knife, they are actually still made and the newer versions look a little bit different, but that is the Warlock. Then I'm just gonna do a two for here because these are basically the same knife. We have two uh, 80 or Demco knives, 80-20.5s. So we have one that is a clip point, drop point, whatever you'd call it. Um, that's this guy all blacked out. And then we have the orange and black, that is the shark's foot as they call it, but basically or essentially a sheep's footed blade. So it's a sheep's footed blade um, and yeah, so really good knives. Both of them are Taiwanese made, um, made out of Aus 10 and Aus 10 is a pretty great steel. I don't mind it at all, but those are my two um, 80-20.5s by Demco Knives. Then I have a Hogue Deca, and of course this one is in Magna Cut, rocking that um, Warncliffe blade, that uh, compound grind Warncliffe blade to be specific. Really cool blade, absolutely dig this knife, and uh, it's just a really hard knife to beat, especially for the price point, especially for it being American made. Then we have a familiar friend. This is the Protec Auto SNG. So this is the automatic version kind of of the Strider SNG. So it's built to be a lot like the Strider SNG, just automatic and of course, technically being manufactured by Protec, but in collaboration with Strider knives. So this is a legitimate collaboration and a legitimate copy of the SNG. <coughs> Next one up is the Large Pilar by CRKT. This one is sporting a full carbon fiber handle by Flytanium and a carbon fiber backspacer to make it a little bit more classy, but it also, I should note, has been, uh, had its flipper tab deleted, so it is now a, not, not a flipper, unlike traditional Pilars. So really cool, very unique little blade, has some style, has some character to it. Truth be told, I don't EDC it too, too often, but it's still a fun one to have in the collection nonetheless. Then we have the TRM Neutron. So this is the smaller version of the Atom. And I really do dig this thing. This is the older school version of the Neutron. But still a very functional knife, totally works. I have a bunch of different handle scales for it, but still rocking that black and orange G10 handles for it. Then we have the McNeese Mac 2, and this one is the three inch version. It's just a plain Jane McNeese Mac 2. The only thing special is it does have the machined backspacer to it, and this one is in CPM 20CV. Far from my favorite knife in the collection, but a lot of people seem to dig these McNeese Mac 2s, and uh, it just never really caught on for me. Uh, it's definitely not my favorite knife in the collection. Then we have to replace the, um, or at least act as a stand-in kind of a replacement for my Gavco Knives XL Nurse that I ended up selling to a really good Instagram friend who I will uh, link in the description below if you want to go check out his Instagram page. But I sold him my uh, Gavco Nurse XL, but to fill the void in my heart, so to speak, I got the Gavco Spiny Dogfish from Civivi Knives. And so this is definitely no exact replacement for a full custom Gavco, but I will say, as I've said in its own independent video, this is probably of all the production Gavco collaborations, the Spiny Dogfish is probably the closest thing you will get to one of his customs, at least in the way that it feels, in the way that it looks, in the way that it acts. Then, then we have the Spartan Blades Spartan Harzy Folder. This is the full-sized version. This is the Battle Babe exclusive version with the Chad Nichols Damascus on there. So just a very classic, very pretty 
blade that is a little bit more art, but still completely functional. It has a great action. You can see you can absolutely flick it open and it rockets out. It's also really cool to see such a smooth action on a blade that is running on um, washers and not running on any kind of bearings. Then next to that one, we have the Benchmade 5 53. Um, this is the mini grip with the Tonto tip to it. This one is sporting aftermarket G10 scales. This is a slightly newer version with the S30V blade steel, but really cool. I feel like the Tonto versions of the grips, um, whether they're the mini grips or the mini, um, <clears throat> the mini grips or the full size grips, they definitely don't get a lot of appreciation. And I also misspoke, this is the 557. The 553 is the full-sized Tonto version. This is the 557, the mini grip version of the Tonto. <laughs> then we have the Devo Knives Pony Stout. This is their smaller version of their stout, and that's why it's called the Pony Stout. It's a little bit smaller, deeply worn cliffed blade, very smooth, OEM'd by Best Tech, and this one is running um, blue denim micarta as its handle scale, so a little bit different. I think this is the only micarta handle scaled blade in my collection currently for EDC like folders, so pretty darn cool to see that as well. Next to that one to throw in here, we do have the Leatherman Skeletool, and this is a pretty basic one with the Topo um, colored uh, blade to it. So it is not Damascus for anyone wondering. That is the Topo finish. And then of course, it is just a standard 420 HC blade, and it is just a Skeletool. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. I'm not gonna open it all up, but it is a plier-based multi-tool, so. Anyways, then we have the TRM Shadow, and this is a really cool blade. Unfortunately, kind of hard to get your hands on these, but really, really cool um, axis lock version or crossbar lock, whatever you'd like to call it, version of a really sick knife that TRM is making. So the TRM Shadow is totally cool. Then we have, on a little bit of a sadder note, we have the Red Rat 1, and this is unfortunately one of Ontario Knife Company's final products because they are going out of business and actually probably by the time you see this video already out of business, technically speaking. But this is a Ontario Knife Company Rat Model 1 in Red G10 with CPM S35VN as the blade steel was a really cool knife, budget oriented, and is kind of sad to see such a cool and iconic company going out of business. Anyways, the next one up is the Mantis Fly Switch. This is a balisong made by Mantis Knives, and this one is pretty darn cool. Sorry, I'm totally struggling flipping it open because I do not have a lot of room here to work with, but this is the Fly Switch, and this is the deeply recurved blade, it is made out of 154 cm, nice and thick, but uh, yeah, just a really cool um, balisong made by them. I also, as you guys can probably notice here, or it's actually a little bit covered up, have the trainer blade as well there. So that is the trainer underneath, and uh, <clears throat> that is the blade in question. All right, next to that one, we have the last Benchmade here to show, and that is the Benchmade 940. This is just an old school 940, super well broken and super well loved. I did have to reprofile that edge to bring back some usefulness to it. Still has some life to it, but probably will need to be rebladed at some point. But yeah, this is just a Benchmade 940 Osborne. Next to that, we have the American Blade Works ABW Model 1, and this one's in Magna Cut and has a deeply worn cliffed blade to it. Super, super sick blade. Love these ABW Model 1s and the Model 2s for that matter. I just wish that they were a little bit more attainable, but still very cool. Next to that, we have the Civivi Cubit, um, or Quibit, whatever you wanna call it but a really just a good all-arounder blade. And yeah, I carry this thing for nearly a month when I didn't have all my knives to carry. So as far as a knife that cuts things, it does a pretty darn good job. 
Lastly, rounding out the folding knives of the collection, we have the um, Emerson Knives Patriot, and this is one of their full-size, really cool blades. I do, I am a sucker, I will say, for Emerson Knives, if you couldn't already tell, and the Patriot is no exception with its deeply buoyed and recurved blade. It just gives it this really mean, kind of almost militant look to it, and I, that is what they were going for. I think they did a good job at accomplishing it. Next to that one, we have the full-sized Commander. So at the very start of the video, we went over the Minicom. This is the full-sized Commander. Of course, they also make the Super Commander, which is a larger upscaled version of the Commander, but still in that same kind of deeply recurved blade. Then lastly, we have the GEC Pocket Carver for traditional folders. And finally ending it, we have the two fixed blades for ADC, and that is the TKL Nightshade for the kind of defensive utility blade. And then my much loved Browse Blades Silent Soldier V2 Drop Point as the final knife rounding out the EDC collection. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. It was a, an absolute rundown, as you guys could probably tell. There are like 50 blades in this collection, but still all really cool and really awesome knives. And it's always fun to be able to have a collection like this so that I can bring you guys a lot of interesting content. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it wasn't too long. As always, God bless and I'm out.